Well, thanks for following along on this e-scouting. Uh, we could have done 20 videos on this. This is kind of the highlight. And in the last episode, you saw that we took this general part of the unit and we identified five spots. We identified where we'd park, how we'd hike in there. I identified some areas where, okay, I think I'll want to glass from here because I can glass three different locations from one spot. And maybe a half mile away, I can walk around the other side of the mountain. I can glass two or three spots from that location. So when I get there, I, I got to have this plan in place. I got to be confident in this plan and I got to work this plan. If I possibly can, I want to get there for a full day of scouting. And sometimes for our schedule, that means I got to drop a day off the hunt at the end for a day of scouting. I want to know, where am I going to park? Well, I kind of think I know, but if I have that scouting day, I can go in there. Maybe I only have the last afternoon to scout, which, hey, that's better than nothing. I drive in there and it's like, oh man, there's a new gate on the road that I didn't know about. Or gee, there's a camp set up there. There's a multitude of things that can be happening there when you show up that could cause you to alter this plan. And what I do, I want to go in here in the daylight. That's why I love being there the day before season. I can walk in in the daylight and I can get up there and I'm marking this on my GPS. Because the next morning, I'm hoping that I'm coming in in the dark and I'm going to shoot a bull that I saw. And I'm going to check out these glassing spots that I have in my head and marked on my map. And I'm going to say, do these really give me the glassing advantage I hope for? Maybe, maybe not. If they don't, now I've got that whole scouting afternoon to move around and say, all right, which spot allows me, what, which glassing location allows me to look at two or three of my spots on this map at the same time. Scouting is about eliminating spots. If I can eliminate three of my 10 spots my first day of scouting, now in my remaining five days of hunting, I've only got probably seven spots left. If I luck out and I find a bull on that scouting day, I'm camping on that bull all day long until dark. And here's why. Every hunting area I'm familiar with has an opening day situation and then a rest of the season situation. After opening day, when the shooting starts, the deck gets reshuffled. So my scouting day serves two purposes. One, can I luck out? Can I, can I work hard and find a bull that I put him to bed the night before season and I walk in in the dark and I am set up ready for shooting light in the morning because the odds are when elk are in sanctuary mode, that bull's gonna be there the next morning. He's not gonna be disturbed yet. He's not, a, he won't have heard any gunshots. My best chance of killing a bull elk on a post rut public land hunt is opening morning. Then I come up with what's my rest of the season plan. So what, are, what am I gonna do the other four days? And in my mind, I gotta be thinking, all right, how are these elk gonna react to hunting pressure, to gunshots, to human scent now back in the woods? It, it kind of dissipated. All these people are back here again. They're hearing car door slam, they're hearing vehicles, and they change their behaviors. Once opening day is done, and I, maybe I haven't filled my tag, now I gotta go and start working my other spots. And I might go and work the other spots nearby the second day. And it might take me a day or two to work those five spots and glass them all. If I've worked these two spots and I still don't have my tag punched, then I just gotta go back to camp that night, take my maps and say, all right, what didn't work here? Why didn't this work? And where else around here is different and is gonna give me an opportunity to get something, maybe see something the next morning. There's the old saying, if you always do what you always done, you'll always get what you always got kind of applies to elk hunting, applies to all hunting. So if after four days of working in these spots, I haven't had any luck, it's time to just say, all right, move on, try something different, sort of a Hail Mary kind of opportunity or, or effort and see where it goes. It doesn't always work, but it works a lot. Go back and watch our videos about 
the five periods of elk hunting. You will not be able to do any of this if you haven't watched those videos. Those videos talk about the early season, pre-rut, peak rut, post rut, and late season. And it tells you the priority of needs in each of those five seasons. And you need to know what the elk primary need is in the season you have your tag. As we said, in this example, we use post rut because that's the hardest time to kill a bull elk on public land. Make sure you know what the elk need in the season that you're hunting, and then come to these four videos, and hopefully this will give you at least an idea of how we do it. This isn't the gospel, it's the way Randy does it. You might do it completely differently. Maybe over time you'll develop some different ideas. If you've got other ideas, I'd love to see them down here in the comments of the video. I, I'm always trying to learn. It's, it's not a science, it's an art more than anything. So, Anyhow, thanks for watching. Hope this was worth your time.